All right, hello everyone. For today's podcast, we're honored to have as our guest, Congressman Fallon from Texas. Congressman Fallon, we're so happy to have you here with us today. Congressman Pat Fallon represents the 4th Congressional District of Texas, just northeast of Dallas and Fort Worth. He has served in Congress since 2021 and sits on the House Oversight Committee, and in particular, the Subcommittee on National Security, the Border, and Foreign Affairs. Regarding immigration, Congressman Fallon has introduced a multiple important pieces of legislation. For example, in 2022, he introduced legislation to eliminate the visa lottery and to increase penalties for aliens who overstay their visas. He also introduced legislation that would expand the use of expedited removal at the border and in the interior of the United States. Finally, Congressman Fallon was one of the first members of Congress to file articles of impeachment against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas for failing to faithfully execute our laws. So Congressman, thank you for joining us today. We're really excited to talk to you about your home state of Texas and the articles of impeachment. Texas has been one of the state's hardest hit by this Biden border crisis. And according to our research, FAIR's research, there are now nearly 17 million illegal aliens in the United States and over 2.2 million of those live in Texas. The growing illegal alien population comes at a high cost to, to American taxpayers, 151 billion annually. And for the state of Texas, the annual cost to taxpayers is about 13.4 billion or about 1,300 per household. In addition to the dramatic increase in illegal aliens crossing our southern border, criminal violence and drug trafficking have also soared. In 2023 alone, in fiscal year 2023 alone, Customs and Border Protection has encountered nearly 29,000 aliens who are convicted criminals who, or who are the subject of active arrest warrants. They've encountered 464 aliens in the terrorist watch list at land points of, ports of entry, and they've seized nearly 20,000 pounds of fentanyl. So Congressman, when you go home, what are your constituents saying about the open borders policies of the administration? Well, they're furious and rightfully so. We share a 1,254 mile border with Mexico, with the state of Texas. And what Joe Biden has done and what we've seen over the last two and a half years is he's made every state a border state. Yeah. Texas bears the a unique front because of our uh, location, but it is costing, as you just mentioned, Texas taxpayers billions of dollars. Operation Lone Star, and they've yeah. spent four and a half billion just trying to augment the the border security and that's of course under the federal purview and joe biden gets a fat f and so does alejandro america because that's why i was the first member of congress this session to file articles of impeachment on my records because it's been a gross dereliction of duty mm -hmm. and it's he's been completely and egregiously negligent so yeah. what my constituents are saying is secure the border. Why can't you secure the border? They're very frustrated. And so am I being one of 435 members of Congress. Uh, it's awful. It needs to be addressed. And I would hope that the American people remember this come November of 2024. Well, it's, it's amazing to hear what your constituents are saying. And just think of what would happen if Texas weren't doing everything it's doing, if they weren't spending all this money, because under President Biden, over 6 million illegal aliens have been encountered and over 1.5 million gotaways have evaded the border patrol. But you know, what's amazing is that even with you know, the latest numbers, the Biden administration is claiming that after the end of Title 42, the, the border numbers are actually down. But we can see from the stats that the White House is just telling only part of the story, right? I mean, isn't this a big shell game? The numbers don't account for tens of thousands that are being rerouted through the CBP-1 app, that famous app, and going to the ports of entry. I mean, what do you think the Biden administration is trying to accomplish with, with this shell game? It's lying with statistics. Mm. They're saying, oh my goodness, look, oh, quote unquote, only 204,000 illegal encounters in May. Well, first of all, that number, as we know, is much higher because they're using the CBP, uh, CBP1 app to say, just come to the ports of entry, if you're, particularly if you're from Nicaragua, Venezuela, Haiti, Cuba, and now Ukraine or Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. We won't even count you as an illegal encounter, which they are. 
But the 204,000, Julie, that's the worst month we've ever had for May. That's the worst month in history. And they're bragging about it, saying that, oh, my God, numbers are down. Well, let's talk truths and not their truth, but actually the truth. There had never been a month ever in our history of over 200,000 illegal border crossings. It had never happened. Under Joe Biden, it's happened, uh, depending on how you want to count, at least 13 times, they admit, and it's more like 17 times, because they abjectly have refused to secure the border. And for them, it's not an immigration problem, it's a processing problem. They're mm -hmm. just trying to process as many people and get them across the line as possible. And then they're helping them claim asylum through the NGOs, the non-governmental organizations, yep. which our taxpayer money goes to, and then they give them to the uh, illegal migrants. And that's another reason, in a way, a method, that the administration, the Biden administration, lies to the American people saying, hey, oh, 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 don't worry, your tax dollars aren't going to facilitate this crisis. Yes, they are. It's not a crisis anymore. It's not even a catastrophe. It's a cataclysm. And that's the truth of the matter. We need to continue to speak truth, not only to power, but to the American people. Oh, I completely agree. And it's really, it's really frustrating how the so-called mainstream media has bought this line, hook, line, and sinker. So, which is another reason we are so grateful to have you on because we need to keep repeating um, this message that they're only telling part of the story. Americans really need to understand that the, the Biden administration is simply rerouting traffic and trying to claim somehow that it's better because it's going through a port of entry instead of, you know, through the, through the arid desert. And it's just important that Americans know that. So I really, I, I really appreciate your thoughts there. Let's turn to the subject of impeachment, which is a really interesting subject these days and, and it's getting a lot of attention in the news. So, as I mentioned before, in January, you introduced articles of impeachment against Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas for high crimes and misdemeanors and engaging in a pattern of conduct that is incompatible with his duties as an officer of the United States. In particular, the articles of impeachment state that the Secretary Mayorkas has failed to ensure that our laws are faithfully executed. So I was wondering, just for our audience's sake, maybe they haven't read um, the articles of impeachment that you introduced. Could you just give a, maybe a couple of examples of, of laws that he has failed, that the Secretary Mayorkas has failed to execute? Well, the number one thing that comes to mind, and we cited it in the articles, was the 2006 mm -hmm. Secure Fence Act. It's a federal law that requires the Director of Homeland, the Secretary of Homeland Security, to have operational control and to maintain operational control of the southern border. When you have 7 million people that we know of crossing the border illegally, because those are known gotaways and encounters. We don't know how large the number of unknown gotaways are, of course. And you have 160 countries represented by those folks that are crossing the border illegally. We've had hundreds of people on the terrorist watch list apprehended. And the drug cartels are making wild profits. And again, as I mentioned, we never have an, we've never had a month over 200,000 illegal encounters. And under this administration, we've had closer to 16. So that is, by any definition, not operational control of the southern border. We have lost it because Alejandro Orcas refuses to let his Customs and Border Patrol agents enforce the laws that are already on the books. That was one of the three articles. The other one was lying to Congress. He said the border was secure. Then he was caught on a hot mic saying the border is chaos privately. So he was clearly lying. And I believe he was lying when he was testifying under oath in front of uh, the you know, elected representatives of the people. And then lastly, the quote unquote whipgate. And to remind your viewers uh, yeah. what whipgate was, there was, yeah, there were pictures of um, Border Patrol agents doing their jobs bravely on horseback. And there were Haitian migrants that they were ensuring didn't enter the country illegally. Well, they took that. They were using their reins to steer the horse around. And they took that and said, oh, they're whipping migrants. And, of course, the way liberals always want to exploit race to their benefit and to use it as political currency, they were like, look at these Border Patrol agents they didn't say white men because most of the Border Patrol agents are Hispanic, but they said, look at these agents whipping, you know, black Haitian migrants. That was not true. We all knew it was false and it was proven to be false. Now, all of my orcas through emails we've obtained recently found that we found out that he knew it was false. And yet he threw his own customs and Border Patrol agents under the bus anyway. So he has a disdain for the very folks that he's supposed to be protecting 
and uh, leading. Yeah, it's not quite the definition. And also, of by the way, he lied to the American people uh, as well. Yeah, he did. No, it's the very, in fact, it's the antithesis of leadership. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I thought it was. I thought it was fascinating that you included that, and I thought it was a good reminder for people that you know, in addition to failing the, to enforce the laws, failing to detain aliens, you know, in the count the count of perjury that you have in there, but to really underscore. Um, his failure as a leader and to really support the mission of the agency. If you don't support the mission of the agency, how can you possibly lead? Let me ask a couple questions then, of course, about what can be done. So the House Oversight Committee has already held dozens of hearings, including one that examined the plight of unaccompanied alien children and another that uh, examined, and this is sad, I saw um, most of this hearing, the declining morale of border agents, as was documented in a scathing report issued by the Inspector General. Mm -hmm. So how can the Oversight Committee build on those hearings and support efforts to hold Secretary Mayorkas accountable for his failure to secure the border and, and our national security? Yeah, it's very important that we have these hearings to um, really keep this on the, on the front burner so that the American people can know the truth along the southern border because if they did they would insist on it being secured if they understood that in mexico if journalists report on cartel activities they have the uh, life expectancy of a fruit fly and their families also may be killed if they if they understood that mexico was the narco state that it is and that the cartels not only make about 25 billion dollars annually on illegal narcotics trafficking but a, a roughly 12 billion dollars recently on human smuggling never mind the sexual trafficking etc at l they would insist that the border yeah. be secure but they don't so it's very important for the oversight committee to have these hearings uh, but i would also like to see and, and this is going i think it's going to go through homeland because there's there's three committees of jurisdiction here that could uh, hear about hear the articles of impeachment and report them favorably to the House as a whole. And that is, of course, and then oversight. Being on oversight, I would love for us to do it, but it doesn't really matter to me as long as it gets done, mm -hmm. because I'd like those hearings to have already happened. Uh, apparently, they're going to uh, to the House, and I'd like to see Alejandro, Alejandro Marcos be impeached. Well, I think having these hearings is is absolutely critical. It, it, seems, it seems evident from the Biden administration's actions and, and certainly everything the president is saying and Secretary Mayorkas is saying or what they're not saying that the success of these policies are, are depend on the administration's trying to sweep the problem under the rug and the complicity of the so-called mainstream media I mean this is how they they intend for this policy to be a success not because it's a good policy we all know it's a horrible policy and all the numbers show it but they're just counting on everyone to look the other way. So I'm just so grateful that, uh, that you all are having hearings and shining a light on this and keeping the pressure up and bringing it to the forefront as often as possible. It's really important. Um, so as we wrap up here, moving forward, what message would you like to send to your constituents, the American people about the state of <laughs> our border security today and in these policies moving forward, what would you like to share with them? I, I'd say one of the most important things that no one really seems to be talking about and linking with our insecure border are the number of American people that are dying. Yeah. And if we look at, let's look at the, one of the toughest portions of the American history, right? The World War, World War II. For those nearly four years, we lost uh, upwards of 400,000 men and women. I mean, it was, a, it was a very difficult time, and we were taking on Imperial Japan and Nazi Germany's and cronies. We're losing almost the same amount of people annually to fentanyl yeah. overdoses and poisonings. And where is that fentanyl made? Nearly all of it is made in China, which is our greatest geopolitical competitor. And then they funnel it through Mexico. They're criminal organizations. Now, the, Mexican, or the Chinese Communist government will say, whoa, 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 those are criminals. Yeah, in an authoritarian state, you know exactly who they are and they operate because you are complicit and you are allowing it to happen. And uh, then have them theory that this is asymmetrical warfare being waged 
on, on by China on the United States of America. And when Joe Biden meets Xi Jinping and he doesn't even bring it up, yeah. that's not, as he said in the State of the Union address, being bold. He's taking bold actions against China. He is laying down in the fetal position on this m- matter with China. That is not leadership. Again, it's a, this is a recurring theme we see. This is the antithesis of leadership. So I want to point that out as many times as I can to people, and I'd love that for them to repeat that to folks that are either independent in the middle politically or on the left to counter their lies, the left's lies about how this border is secure, because it's clearly not. It's never been more unsecure in our lifetime. And that's the really the thing that we need to, to drive home is we need a president of the United States like President Trump that will actually enforce laws on the books and put the American people's security first. Yeah, that's a wonderful message. You're so right. You know, illegal immigration, I mean, it has consequences. This border security, I mean, it matters. And there are very real consequences daily and Americans feel them. So uh, it's a wonderful point. I think we should end on that. Um, It's been such an honor talking to you. Um, Thank you for talking to us about all things immigration. And we hope to have you back here soon. Thank you. You all are doing great work. We appreciate it and God bless. Thank you very much.